<laughs> hey, what's up? It's Coach for Lift Fitness, and I'm coming at you with what your warm up should entail. Now, this is going to be very thorough, and we're going to use an acronym called LRATS, L R A T S. L-R-A-T-S. And that's going to encompass just about everything your warm up should really be getting done, as well as incorporating a little bit of your cool down. So, first, starting it all up, uh, some of these are you're going to pick and choose, like what's going to be work for you. What you're doing on one day is not going to necessarily uh, necessarily need to be your warm up for what's going to be uh, happening last week or the, the following week. And the reason being is because there are so many different things that encompasses your warm up. For example, on a nice day, you don't have to incorporate the L, the light warm up or the light uh, uh, jog, the light biking, the light etc. This is going to be about three to five minutes, and it's most imperative whenever you've just been inactive all day or when the temperature is just really cold. Now, this light warm up could also be something as simple as a Really warm shower because all it's designed to do is just get the body up and ready get the blood flowing and get the muscles warm right very very important and we're not looking for any kind of uh, uh, sweating or, or any kind of heavy activity so it is very very minimal we're looking at like uh, maybe 50% uh, of your heart rate all right so very very uh, minimal all right, that's the L. You're going to uh, follow up into your R, which is going to be a relaxation. You're rolling out all of that in, uh, stuff. And that, that's just to uh, loosen up the really, really tight stuff. And this is really imperative uh, for those that are just getting into a serious program that haven't incorporated any kind of corrective exercise. It's going to be a rolling out. It's going to be uh, the, the tissue therapy, the really important stuff to make sure that when you uh, approach your workout for today, that it's going to really hammer out for you and not hurt you. Very, very critical. Now, uh, doing this art for some people and not everybody, but for some people, a little bit of static stretching is actually going to be necessary. Now, we're just looking for a little bit of range of motion if, if it's really, really hindered uh, for whatever reason. And then a little bit of static stretching after you relax the muscle uh, may be beneficial for you, but we're not looking about hitting the, the entire thing. We're looking at maybe one or two muscle groups if that's the case for you. For me, um, I rarely do it. However, after I go back from or come back from a run for like the next week, my right calf is is just crazy tight and it's because I'm working on an issue with my peroneals and my leg takes over and just just doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing but my calf is crazy tight and so that translates right up into my back so if I'm doing something like a squat or a deadlift for the day you better believe it I got to do a little bit of static stretching just to loosen it up now after that static stretching the relaxation the, the rolling out the static stretching uh, being a part of that, uh, you're going to go into the activation. Your activation is your corrective exercise, the mobility drills, and the stuff that's going to get you moving better. Movement prep. So if we're doing squats for today, you might move into a kneel back. We're rocking knee backs. These are your uh, single leg uh, uh, side lunges with the uh, arms up overhead. All of that stuff that's going to be a little bit more advanced. Move from the ground, move it all the way up, etc. Uh, so your movement prep. Uh, or the activation, the corrective exercise of the L rats. The last part is going to be your training. Now, during your training, of course, you need to be choosing the first one to three exercises, depending on what you're doing. If you're going to be doing some strength training and you're, you're doing what we call a horizontal loading, which means you're going to do squat, rest, squat, rest, squat, rest, then move to the next one and do like deadlift, rest, deadlift, rest, deadlift, rest. You're hitting all of those squats before you move to the next. Then you just really need to focus on just that one. Uh, squats and so you're going to warm up with anywhere from uh, three to about eight reps and those are the, the, the two extremes. I shoot for about three to five typically eight is usually unnecessary but you're going to be starting it off with something light. You're looking for uh, about 40 to 50 percent of your one rep max. That means if I'm doing a 150 pound squat you better believe it I'm starting off with somewhere around 60 pounds which is just over the bar uh, up to about 75 pounds for my first couple of sets and you just move it up a little bit more a little bit more and you're only looking for about six to eight reps on everything. So your movement prep, the uh, uh, the training uh, uh, activation here, all of that stuff, six to eight reps, just to get the body moving a little bit more specific with the exercise. And then once you find out like, wow, this weight feels pretty good, I'm hitting about six reps, but you know, I, I think I could hit the number of reps I need to be doing, then by all means, you're gonna start off with that weight or just a little bit more, and you're gonna be shooting for the actual workout for the day. That, that's gonna be the ending uh, or the beginning of your real strength training program or your circuit training or whatever it is you're really doing, your resistance training. All right, so very, very critical. Now, if you're doing something like five reps for your workout, by all means, you're gonna be shooting a little bit lower once you start getting into the higher, uh, higher weight. So you may still might warm up with like six to eight reps, but once you start getting to the real heavy weight, shoot for like one to two, et cetera. Uh, all right, lastly, your, st uh, your cool down, your static stretching. That's really when static stretching is going to be coming into big play. So you want to incorporate that, hit up everything that you've been working out today. Now that's really, really critical um, for some people that are really hyper -mo uh, mobile. The people that have uh, what we call congenital laxity, where they're just really loose. They're, you know, the people that are like bending all over the place. They can like 
hyperflex their elbow and stuff. They don't necessarily need to do any static stretching. There's no need to be doing any of that because the, the purpose of the static stretching is just to get the muscles to relax a little bit more. But their muscles are already so crazy relaxed that that's actually going to hurt them a little bit more. So if this is you, uh, if you have a, uh, if you are a cheerleader or if you are a gymnast, then this is you. You don't need to do any of that static stretching. So it's really, really, really critical that actually once you're done with the workout, you're done. All right. Um, you might do a little bit of diaphragmatic breathing, you might do some other breathing techniques to, to bring the heart rate down, you might just go for a light walk around, um, but you don't need to incorporate the static stretch. So L reps, hit up your light warm up on a cold day or when you're particularly inactive, start moving into your reactivation, uh, or I'm sorry, your uh, relaxation uh, and your mo uh, mobility work uh, and maybe some static stretches if that's you. Uh, into your activation, your mobility drills, your mobility movement prep, uh, moving it into your training with your light warm up, six to eight reps of your really low weight or uh, low uh, percentage of weight, uh, and then moving it into your cool down with your static stretches if that's for you.